Welcome back. In today's lesson, we're going to be talking about the image and image view classes. The image class represents a graphical image, and the image view class can be used to display an image. Now, both of these classes are some of the more important classes that we're going to be using. However, it's important to note that an image class, just like with the uh, web class that we've worked with before, and with the file class, when you create an image class object, there is no guarantee it's corresponding to a real image. To do that, you have to make sure. So you have the uh, data field and you have a getter method called the get error, which indicates whether or not the image was loaded correctly. We're going to assume today, since we have a very specific link, that our image works correctly. But in other cases, when you're working with a non-standard image, you should always check to make sure that the image works correctly. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, we can now get started. Now today we're actually going to be creating a new uh, object. We're going to create a new HBox class. This HBox is going to be a slightly different variation to the, uh, the pane and the, win and the uh, stack pane that we've been using in the past. Because an HBox will always display its nodes horizontally. This means that we can actually display two images. We're going to be working with the US flag. We're going to display two US flags next to each other horizontally and we're going to display one rotated 90 degrees downwards. However, before we get started on any of this, we have to make sure we import the appropriate classes. We're going to import first the uh, Java FX dot scene dot layup dot hbox. This hbox, as I mentioned, we're going to be using just like a pane to display our images. Then we're going to need to import the javafx.scene.image.image uh, image. and then we have to make sure we import the same thing except this time we're going to be importing the image view which will allow us to display the image object we've created so the, fir the way we're going to do this is first we're going to need to make sure uh, we're going to have this after everything so we're going to create a fourth window today now, first of all, we have to make sure we create a new stage so that we can display this on a new window. So, just look at our previous stages and uh, highlighted those. They were highlighted. We're just going to say stage, and we'll call this uh, stage 3 is equal to a new stage. No parameters. This is just a basic stage. We're going to be uh, improving upon this later on. After that, though, we're going to create a new pane object. This is going to be called, and let's say we want to call this pane 2 or even pane 5 for a uh, clear distinction is equal to a new hbox. Now the reason we've declared we've had a declared type of pane here is so that uh, if for whatever reason we end up using this pane object in a method we want to make sure we give it as much flexibility as possible so we're going to declare it as a pane type even though the actual type is an hbox type. We're going to specify 10. This 10 creates a very basic hbox and allows it a number of nodes it can carry. After that, we're going to create a new, uh, we're going to say pane, uh, or in this case pane 5, dot set padding. Now just like padding in the real, in the real world, padding in an hbox works so that you have some sort of barrier. It's so that you're not constantly right on the edge. We're going to have a barrier of 5, 5, 5, 5 so that it's not completely on the edge, but it's not going to be very far off either. The way we're going to do this is say new uh, inserts. And this, once again, uh, we're going to have to import this, or you can, the reason I've left it here, you can either choose to import it, or you can just specify its direct path. The direct path of this is java.fx.geometry.insets. So if you don't want to import it, you can always do it this way. And then we have to make sure we create the new insets. Inside this uh, parameter, we're just going to provide our insets. We're going to say 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, which allows us to have padding of 5 pixels by 5 pixels by 5 pixels by 5 pixels on every single side, making it uniform. After that, we're going to create our new image object. We're going to call this image image. And it's going to be equal to a new image. And then inside the inside the parentheses, inside a string, you can either specify a file path. This file path has to be inside the same directory as the class file is stored. So it has to be in the bin, uh, in the bin folder inside your Java project, inside your workspace. 
or you can use a web page. I'm going to be using a web page today, but remember, if you are using a web page, it has to be the direct link, HTTP colon slash slash. You can't omit any of that, otherwise you'll get an error. And if you're wondering how this works in the back end, it just creates a new file or web object uh, for the specific object for either the file or URL you're creating, and then just assigns that to the new image so that the image object can draw that file down. In our case, we're going to be using that web page. This is going to be a very basic uh, web page, and this just has a picture of the American flag. After that, we can now start uh, adding. It, we're going to have to display this using the image view class. Then we can add it to the pane. So we're going to say pane.getChildren. And in this case, we're not going to be using the add all. We're going to be individually adding each of these images because we want to specify each of these a little bit. So we're going to say pane.getChildren.add. And then we're going to add a new image view. And then we're going to provide the image object. Now the reason we're creating an, un an anonymous object is that we don't have to reference this image view object after this. However, since we've already created a specific image object up here, we can then, in the later two uh, image view objects, we can reference this to create those two new image view objects. So let's get started on those two new uh, image view objects. So we're going to say image view, And then we're going to have a name. Let's say we want to call this image view 2. And I'm going to follow that naming convention. Is equal to a new image view. And then we'll pass the parameter of image because we're still working with the same image. However, this time, we're actually going to change this a little bit. We're going to shorten the flag a little bit so that it fits inside a very specific box. We're going to convert it from a rectangle to a square. It's going to be 100 pixels by 100 pixels. So. To do that, we're just going to say image view dot, or I'm sorry, image view two dot set fit height, and then we'll provide 100, and we'll do the same thing for the uh, width, except we'll provide, uh, well, instead of saying set fit height, we'll say set fit width. Now what this is doing is it cr using our image view object that we've created, and you can manipulate an image view object just like any other node. We're going to set the fit height. This means that we want it to fit the size of the window, and we're specifying the height or width that we want it to fit to. In our case, that's going to be 100, so it's going to be 100 pixels by 100 pixels, meaning everything is going to be shrunk. Relative sizing stays the same. This is why we say set fit height, but we're going to shrink it down so that it fits into a more compact space. So it might look a little bit cramped, but it'll be more space conservative. And finally, we're going to have to add this uh, to the pane. So we're going to say pane5.getChildren. And then we're going to add the new image view. I'm sorry, we're going to add the image view too. And with that, we've now successfully added both the uh, original image, which is uh, unaltered, inside the first image view object, which was anonymously created. Then we've created a second image view object. We fit the flag so that it fits to a, uh, it's shrunk down a little bit. And then we add that to the image as well. So it'll read left to right in the same way that we read. So it'll be first the original picture, then the shrunk picture. And finally, we have to make sure we have the rotated flag. The way to do that is we're gonna say image view, uh, image view three is equal to new image view and this time just like before we're going to provide image except this time we're going to rotate it it still has that set rotate method because the, an image view is again a node so we're going to say image view 3 dot set rotate and hopefully you can now see why we talked about nodes uh, specifically since if you know node methods you know you can apply them to any node like an image view object and we're going to be rotating it 90 degrees clockwise. Finally, we have to make sure we add this just like with the other ones. We're going to say pane5.getChildren.add. And we want to add the uh, image view object that we have right here, which in this case is going to be the uh, image view 3 that we've created right there. 
And with that, now all we have to do is, just like with our other uh, stages, we have to make sure we create a new scene to display it, and then we have to display the scene, the stage with a specific title. So we're gonna say, state, or I'm um, sorry, scene, and let's say we call this uh, scene six, just to keep with our uh, slightly altered naming convention, so that we make sure we've distinguished the H box and this new group of objects with much higher numbers. We're gonna say scene six is equal to new scene, and we're going to provide the pane because we want to make sure that the whenever uh, that we display the pane on this scene. Then we're going to set a title for the stage. We're going to say stage uh, five dot set title, and we want the title to be let's say show image. After that, we are going to set the scene, and this should be uh, stage three. I'm sorry. We're going to say uh, stage three dot stage three dot uh, set scene. And we're going to set the scene just like we did before with the set scene method. And we're going to provide the scene we've created, which in this case is called scene six. And finally, we have to display this, this stage using the stage three dot show, which will display the entire stage back out to the user. And if we run our program, you'll see that we have three American flags. The first American flag is the original picture. This is at its original size, original resolution, everything about it is normal. After that, we have our shrunk American flag, where it was reduced down to 100 pixels by 100 pixels, but remember, everything was shrunk correspondingly. So the uh, ratio between the stars and between the uh, stripes is still going to be the same, but it's just been shrunk to a proportional degree. After that, we have the original image, but it's been rotated this time by 90 degrees. Hopefully you found this lesson useful. To summarize, in today's lesson we talked about uh, the HBox, which we'll be expanding upon later on. It's just a different type of pane. We talked about the image view and image uh, classes, and we talked about how to use the node-specific methods that we've talked about, and how to practically use all of these to create a good implementation where we rotated an image, we displayed the original image, and we shrunk the image to, its, uh, to a specific size. And we talked about the inserts, I'm sorry, the insets, which allow us to pad a pane so that it, it's not completely right on the edge, so that there's a little bit of uh, leeway between the edge and between the images. Hopefully you found this lesson useful, and hopefully you're able to apply what we've talked about with regards to images, image view, and the HBox in your own code.